Dear friends in Christ, today is the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today we continue the eschatological discourse of our Lord Jesus Christ in the parable of the ten virgins. Of course, eschatos refers to the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, or hell. Let us also remember that in this parable of the ten virgins, there are many symbolic languages which has different and divergent meanings. The bridegroom refers to our Lord Jesus Christ, the bridesmaids refer to you and to me. The bride, which was not mentioned, of course, refers to the church. Of course, the wedding refers to our salvation, to eternal life, to that moment where we are going to spend eternity with God. The shutting of the door refers to the final judgment, and those who are left outside, the outside of that gate refers to hellfire. Now, among the ten virgins, Jesus tells us that five were wise and five were foolish. Let us cast our minds back to Matthew chapter 7 from verse 24, where Jesus explains to us what it means or the characteristics of a wise person and that of a foolish person. A wise person usually have God as his foundation. He listens to God and he does the will of God. That is what makes someone a wise person. Now, in this story, we understand that the difference between the wise and the foolish is that while the wise virgins had foresight, you know, they foresaw that the bridegroom may be delayed. The foolish virgins did not have foresight. They did not bring extra oil. This was a very simple mistake, and this mistake cost them the honor of participating as bridesmaids in the wedding ceremony. There are many theologians and scholars and teachers and preachers who have tried to bring out the meaning of this oil. Some say it is faith, some say it is piety, some say it is good works, some say it is charity, some say all kinds of things. But let us remember that this is a symbolic language that Jesus used to communicate to us what it means to be ready. Being ready is not just about material readiness, but we are talking about spiritual readiness. When we look clearly to this parable, we understand that the vessel that is supposed to contain the oil could be our human soul. And the oil becomes what we feed our soul with. So what are the things that you know, nourish our souls? It is our loving action. It is our obedience to the will of God. It is our perseverance. It is our consistency in doing good. There are so many things that, you know, energize our soul. There are so many things that nourish our soul. And let us not forget that as part of reformation or refilling of our soul, we get that through the sacrament of confession. Personally, I don't want to dwell so much on the meaning of this oil because it's a symbolic language. I want us to reflect on why these five virgins were referred to as fools or as foolish virgins. You know, this was a simple thing. They were carrying a stick, you know, at the end of it is the rag soaked in oil. So what is it that really made them to forget to bring extra oil, which they already know that Part of the Jewish you know, culture, part of their own culture, is that the bridegroom is going to take a long time. It's, it's, you know, it's part of the joy that the bridegroom comes in an unknown hour. So they knew the culture of their place. They knew their own culture. Pero they, they, they were not very enthusiastic. They were not very you know, desirous. They did not really prepare for this uh, participation. You know, they're supposed to have that enthusiasm. If any young girl is invited to be part of the maid of honor or to be the part of the bridesmaid you know it is a great honor it is an honor that every young person every young lady is praying for and here comes these guys these five foolish virgins who did not take this opportunity this honor as you know as a privilege they did not really appreciate it and that is why i believe that it's because of their laxity that they forgot to bring extra oil now, many of us, we are also guilty of forgetting something very important. 
I remember, you know, serving in a mass, a wedding mass, where the bridegroom actually forgot his ring. And he had to borrow a finger rosary from someone inside the church there. So there are some times that we are so preoccupied with all kinds of anxieties and all kinds of thoughts, you know. That's why I say we have to fill our soul, we have to fill our heart with good things. You know, sometimes when our hearts are so toxic, we tend to forget so many things. We tend to, you know, lose attention and lose focus in life because toxicity and negativity has its own own way of affecting us, affecting our mood, affecting everything about us. So many of us are guilty of this, you know, forgetfulness. There are sometimes some husbands even forget the bad days of their wife, and sometimes the wives forget the bad days of their husband, and sometimes some parents even forget the bad days of their children, the anniversaries, and so many beautiful things about them we forget. You know, this is something we really need to reflect on. You know, what are the important things in my life that I forget? The second thing I would like us to reflect on is the reality of foresight. You know, how do I say I have a foresight in my vocation? How do I, you know, show that I have foresight in my marriage? How do I show that I have a foresight in my relationship? The issue in this parable is all about waiting. Of course, they were waiting all of them were waiting, 10 of them were waiting, but the way the wise virgins were waiting was quite different from the way the foolish virgins were waiting. Just like many of us who are in relationships, you know, you can be in a relationship and you're waiting foolishly. There are people who are in relationship and they are waiting wisely. So these are two different issues. But let us also remember that Jesus tells us that Time is of essence in this parable. There will be no repentance after we die. There's only opportunity. This time that we refer, our life this time is the symbol, is symbolized with the delay of the bridegroom. There will be a time when we will not have any opportunity anymore to repent. Even if the Pope will come here to celebrate our funeral mass, it will not cause us to repent. The funeral mass we celebrate is basically to ask God for his mercy, not for the repentance of the person who has died. Today I really like to say that my reflection is titled, Ready and Oily. You know, the best way we can show that we are waiting for the coming of the Lord, the best way we can show that we are ready is through the word ready. Repentance is not just about abandoning or renouncing our evil attitudes and habits. It is about turning around and embracing God. The E refers to emulation. Who do we emulate? We have to imitate Jesus. We have to emulate Jesus in his love, in his compassion, in his kindness, in everything that he does, in everything that he showed us in the gospel. We have to emulate that. We have to imitate that. The A refers to, you know, abide with Jesus, remain with him, you know, be, you know, accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Abide with him and, you know, welcome him into your life so that he becomes part of your life, so that your life, my life, become Christocentric. The D refers to dedication. We need to be dedicated to God. We need to be consecrated to God. We need to be committed to God. We need to be devoted to God. We devote and we dedicate our thoughts, our words, our actions. We dedicate everything to God. That's what it means to be ready. And God becomes the center of our life. And the Y refers to yes. Yes, Lord. Just like our Blessed Mother Mary, one of the major ways we wait for the coming of the Lord is to always say yes to the word of God. Like Mary said, yes to his commandment, yes to his will, yes to his plan, yes to everything that is good. And we never rebel against the will of God. To be oily refers to obedience to the will of God, the word of God. The I refers to intimacy, intimacy, friendship. I have to make sure that Jesus becomes my best friend. The L refers to listening. You know, to listen to Jesus means self-surrender. It means attention. It means I discipline my, you know, my desires, my appetites in order to listen and to do what he tells me. Of course, the yes refers to, you know, submitting myself to him and allowing his word that I have listened to, to influence me, to control me. 
the foolish virgins did not have oil. They did not have obedience. They did not have that intimacy. They did not have that listening, you know, disposition. And this was why they lost the life eternal. This was why they lost eternal happiness. As we continue to celebrate this day, my dear brothers and sisters, let us remember, as I said in the beginning, that repentance is only for those who are alive. Once we are dead, there will be no repentance. But Jesus gives us the opportunity at this moment that we may look into ourselves, repent and come back to God and become real children of love. I want to thank you for sharing your time with me. Please remember to share this video. Remember also to subscribe to my YouTube channel that we may continue to spread the word of God. If you have anything to support us, please feel free to send it across to us. May God bless you. I want you to remember that you are blessed to bless.